blossoms. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. What you want to see, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, hi. I'm Jenny Rosencrantz with the University of Maryland Extension, and I'd like to introduce you to Dean Burroughs, and he is Master Beekeeper. And July may be a, day, a month that you say, oh, it's really hot, I can't do anything, but you know these bees actually work so well in June and July, making sure that they pollinate all these wonderful fruits and vegetables for us. Oh, Meat. yes, they do, yes, very much so. Yeah, we're in the field here with cantaloupes and watermelon mm -hmm. and peppers, and the bees work them uh, abundantly to produce a nice, beautiful, well-rounded, delicious fruits and vegetables. So we can enjoy them. We're gonna show you step-by-step step on how a beekeeper actually works with his bees. We've got a cool little smoker that we will toss some smoke in the air. We've, uh, we found out that it's actually a cool smoke, not a hot smoke. And uh, we also found out that by wearing these uh, white bee suits, you definitely get hot in the summertime. <laughs> so join us for Delmarva Gardens coming up next right here on Pack 14. Okay, we're here in the field with the bees, and one of the things that I have found when you're um, going out to a field with bees, or if you even have bees in your backyard and you're going to be working with them, you want to be sure that you don't look like one of their predators, which would be a bear or a skunk. Yes. And I, did, I had thought about the bear, but I didn't realize about the skunk, which when you think about it, both of those animals come in very, very dark colors. So we are dressed completely in light colors. I'm wearing a long sleeve white shirt and I've got uh, rubber bands here. And that's so that if they get a hankering for me, they're not gonna have an easy job of getting up my sleeve. And I've also got uh, my socks, which are white, although these are garden socks, so they have funny things on them. Yeah. But I have my pant legs tucked into them too, uh, so that they can't, come up my pant legs because don't bees when they fall to the ground start climbing up like yeah, they a tree. work up they work they do. up yes and they're yeah. not looking to sting me at all yeah. they're just going what is this oh it's in the way oh you moved bit and that that kind of stuff yeah. so if you're calm around bees they're calm around you that they are very much so if a bee goes up your sleeve or mm -hmm. your pants leg mm -hmm. that bee crawls up and it's very 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 uh, friendly until we bend and press it Yes. Then it stings. It says, hey, something's after me. So it, right. it's defensive, you know, in that way. And Other I, than that, fine. And if somebody squished you, you'd be defensive yes, too. Yes, <laughs> you would be. Very much so. The other thing is, uh, <clears throat> Dean gave me these really cool little uh, latex gloves. And they yeah. don't like latex. It doesn't feel like a skin, so they're not going to sting me if I wear these. Right. So that's pretty good. Now, we're out here in the middle of this wonderful field. Actually, we're here in two different types of field. This is the cantaloupe field. And beside us, we also have watermelons. And Dean, you were talking about why they like cantaloupes better. Yes, cantaloupes. You see the blooms here. These blooms are open. They open early in the morning. And their prime time for pollinating is from 8 to 10 in the morning. These blooms are open one day. And bees must visit these blooms at least eight times to fully pollinate and get a good quality melon. Uh, in this case, a uh, cantaloupe. Yeah. So they're out and they're flying around. And we see them on the cantaloupes because there's one right there. Yeah. Yeah, it's going right in there. And she will pick up the pollen and nectars and take it to another bloom, which she's done here. And she will continuously do that. And one thing about bees, we have a large field here. And we have 20 beehives right there. They come out and they start the closest to them. And then they go farther and farther out because bees leave a scent when they pollinate and other bees know that someone's been there. And so they go and they keep uh, broadcasting to pollinate through the field. And don't they do a dance to tell the other bees exactly what they've found? Like if they start out there and they come here and find some, they do the dance. And if everybody else sort of follows the same dance, they go, I know what you're talking about and come right to the field. They, they do. They, they take the taste <laughs> of nectar back and pollen okay. and they, they do a round dance, uh, which tells the bees you know, that there is nectar source within mm -hmm. 100 meters of a hive. And then when they do figure eight, it's farther than that. And they oh. fly out in the direction of the sun and that tells them where, where that location is. That's neat. They give the other bees in the hive a taste of nectar and uh -huh. they have a tremendous sense of smell. Right. And they've got that taste and the smell. When they fly out, they get close to that area. Then oh, that's it. Let's go down and, and fill our crops with nectar. So they can figure that on their own. So the nectar actually is a source of carbohydrates yes. for them. And the pollen is actually a source of protein. Just as we need protein, whether we're vegetarians and, and eat protein from beans 
or um, something like that, or, or if we're meat eaters, we have chicken or fish or, or meat. So yes. anyways, that's pretty neat. And yeah. right here, you can even see the, there's some cantaloupes here that the bees have um, gone ahead and pollinated the flowers and the fruit is good. If you don't have the right pollination, you don't have really beautiful fruit, and that's really important. Right, right. Now here's how it starts, if you can see this. This is a female bloom, and it has the, uh, the answer and stigma on it. It's called a perfect flower, and they will pollinate that, but they need to go to the male plants also, which have all pollen to, to pollinate that. And then you get a little larger fruit. This has been pollinated. See how the flower has died? Yeah. It's oh. dead now. Yeah. And so that's starting out as the new cantaloupe. And then you progress to, we have in here, a more developed one. And this is a beautiful round melon mm -hmm. and beautifully shaped. And in one week, this will be ready to harvest ready to go. The neat thing about cantaloupes is when they're ready, um, they actually, they do something called they slip off the vine. So you can use your thumb to push the cantaloupe off the vine, off of the cantaloupe. And if the cantaloupe doesn't come off the vine very easily, leave it be. It's got a couple more days to ripen. Watermelons, we're still kind of trying to figure out when they're ready. Somebody said, if you thump them, they're ready. But I've had a lot of friends who are very musically inclined go, that doesn't work either. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of other things. But let's go over and take a look at the, the uh, watermelon okay. field to see watermelon. if we can find any, any cool bees. All right, sure. Well, this is a watermelon field. And as you look over the field, you'll notice that you don't see as many bright yellow flowers. And that's one thing we were talking about, how bees see different colors. What were the colors that they liked the best? Uh, bees see four colors, blue, blue-green, uh -huh. yellow, and ultraviolet rays from the sun, which we right. can't see. That's right. But other than that, everything looks black and white to them. So it's really important for the, the bees to see color that they want, and that's why these melons have obviously decided that they're gonna be the bright yellow ones. And if you notice, like squash blossoms, definitely need to be pollinated by bees and they're bright yellow also. Yeah. But over here, I want to show you guys something that's really cool. This is actually a regular watermelon and here's a little teeny flowers. Notice that there's like one little flower here, whereas on the other, um, on the cantaloupe, so maybe three or four, and it's a softer yellow. It's not as bright a color. It's not as iridescent in my opinion. And this is going to be considered a pollinator for the rest of the, um, the watermelons because this is a regular watermelon that's going to have seeds. Whereas the watermelons that we are going to be harvesting over here are what they call seedless watermelon. Okay, Dean, you were going to show us uh, some of the flowers right here in the watermelon. And, and these are seedless yeah. watermelons. <clears throat> these are seedless, right. And you notice, we looked in the cantaloupe field, we saw all those blooms. Here you don't see them as readily. The right. blooms on watermelon are less dense, especially on seedless watermelons. Now here's a nice yellow bloom here. And <clears throat> there are not many others on the vine. The, some others will be coming and blooming in a few days. But, <clears throat> and then also you need a dense vine to keep the watermelons from baking in the sun. So down here under the leaves, you see, here's a well-pollinated watermelon just starting Ooh. out, and that'll be ready in about two weeks. There's what's re re left of the bloom, that little brown spot there, mm -hmm. that uh, once the uh, bloom is pollinated, it will die uh, one day, it will last one day, and again, you need eight visits of bees to these uh, blooms to actually pollinate for a, a well-developed fruit, at least eight visits. And you'll get that with the density of bees that are out here on the field. Okay, and I noticed also that we have some of the native bumblebees here. Yes. And we, we also have mason bees, which are uh, bees that come out early, early in the springtime. And they're great for pollinating things like uh, orchard fruit, apples, and, and plums, and Early peaches. season, yeah. Easy yeah. early season. Yeah. I noticed that at home, my Nandina was full of bees earlier this spring. And I thought, wow, I've never seen so many bees. Every time you walk by, it was bzzz. It was really cool. And the thing yeah. is, I knew that they were so busy collecting their nectar and pollen that they weren't gonna bother me because bees, right. they're worker bees. They're busy, they're ladies. They're all, yeah. they're, they've got a job really, to do and they're really. gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, we're all around bees this morning, right, uh -huh. on these crops and they just move out of our way yeah. and they're not defensive. Now, on, at the hive, if we're banging around a hive, that, that's their home. They're mm. protecting, they're defensive there. Right. But out in the field, in your yard, mm -hmm. bees are not gonna try to find you and try to sting you. Right. Now, if you step on one barefoot, or you grab one, yes, you're going to get stung. But if somebody grabs you, aren't you going to object to that? <laughs> oh, we don't like that. 
The other thing well, we were talking about how yeah. this is a field that has the same kind of crop on one side and the same kind of crop on the other side. So the bees are getting the same food, the same mm. nectar and the pollen over and over and over again. And we were talking about mm. how, what's your favorite food? If it's ice cream, wow, that's cool. You get ice cream for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Well, the first week that's pretty cool, but. Yeah, it gets old, you get tired of that. Yeah, you really do. And bees now, that's the thing, we don't have the variety of food for them anymore. Right. With the uh, clearing of the trees and bushes and shopping centers and sidewalks and all. Right. So we feed them supplement uh, mineral vitamins mm -hmm. and pollen and all now. Right. And in a field like this, there's a certain amount of nutrition they'll get, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> not adequate for them. So I bring these hives out here in June. Mm -hmm. They weigh 80 pounds each. They're uh -huh. heavy. Yeah. When I take them in in late October, uh, late uh, August rather, they'll weigh about 50 pounds at best. They've wow. lost weight because they're consuming that food, that honey right. in there to survive, and they just subsist on these vine crops. So there, it's not a balanced diet. Like we were always no. saying, you know, you, you should have a certain amount of vegetables and fruit as well as protein and, and carbohydrates. And they're just getting the minimum. So if you're going to do bees in your own backyard, have a variety of flowers. That's a good idea. Yeah. And one more thing, Jenny, too, out here, mm -hmm. to clarify for people, the bees will not make surplus honey off these crops. Right. You know, there's just a, but our main honey crops in this area, mm -hmm. the shore, are um, uh, tulip poplar, basswood, right. clover is the main one, white clover. Dutch clover. Right. And we're, most beekeepers are harvesting this week their honey. In July, as we get into July, the honey flows over, uh -huh. so we start harvesting our honey, the okay. surplus. Okay, so, so the end of June, the first of July is when you go for the real good stuff, but you've got to provide right. Like basswood, that's another tilia. Um, there's a lot of different ones of those. And yeah. then again, you could go ahead and plant a lot of flowers and herbs, which are really, really good too, yes. to give the bees a variety of a food source, really. Sure, yeah. Well, what Very do you say important. we suit up and go check out those bees? Okay, let's do that. Okay. Okay, this is um, a way to make working with bees safer for humans, and this is a smoker. What does it actually do for them? Well, the smoker, we use nice, white, cool smoke, uh -huh. and we smoke the hive before we go in, and it cools, it's cool smoke, it, it, it uh, calms the bees down, they start consuming honey. And ah. two things happen. When they consume honey, they can't bend their little abdomen to sting, uh -huh. and it also, if we are stung, we can smoke that area and it masks the uh, pheromone, alarm pheromone. Right, that's very that, important. Because if you get stung one time around bees, a beehive especially, and don't do anything, you're gonna get stung more. Because they go back and tell the scissors, hey, this, this guy, let's get him out of here. Yeah, because he's an intruder. Yeah, so that's why we, and I use burlap, just burlap bands I kind of put in because okay. it lasts long and it uh, works real well. And you can use anything, cardboard, uh, pine needles, and paper. I start with paper, and to get it started, then uh, I, this uh, burlap will light and smoke real well. So you so use I'm, this old burlap again? Right, and I use that again. Now that's another thing. When I'm done, and I'm done for the day, day I'll put a cork in here, mm -hmm. and it will just, that will go out. Right, because there's no oxygen yeah. to it. Now, new beekeepers uh, have been guilty of Lighten their smoker, use them, and then when they're done, they open it, throw it in a trash can, Ooh. and then you've got a fire. Yeah, not good. So be careful of that. Especially now, when it's as dry as it is. On years ago, my master's beekeeping field test, you had to light a smoker, and it could not go out as you inspected the hives. And your mentor could not be stung. If, if either of those happen, you flunk the test. Well, that's that was, good to know. I was fortunate I made it, so that was good. <laughs> Now you're going to see the smoke start coming yeah. out here now as this light. And the bellows basically give oxygen to the fire, keeping it going. Right, right, right. And now get this going over. Okay. And you pack this, I like to say, you pack it like your grandmother's corn cob pipe. <laughs> Except the youngsters today don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> My grandmother smoked a corn cob pipe. <laughs> so you know what? You don't want it too tight and you don't want it too loose and it'll burn for hours like that. Now I'm pumping it up. Getting... And you can see the smoke coming out. Yeah, and that is a and white smoke. This is nice and cool. It won't burn. 
the bee's wings are very fragile. Yeah. And if fire comes out, it will burn the wings and they're, they're gone. So That's th an interesting thought. I didn't realize that. Yeah, this works very well. Very cool. And now they were ready to go. Okay, good. Okay, now. So we're going to go to the hive. Now, notice the suit that I have on. Are you going to put your hood yes, up? Yes, yes. I am. Okay. Yeah. And this is basically um, a veil, which is something I can see out of it all the way up around here, which is very important because you want to have good peripheral vision. And it's zipped up. It's very tight around here. And it's a little bit loose here, but remember, I've got the tightness in my, uh, in my shirt. So I should be just fine. And now, Dean was brave. He was wearing a bright red t-shirt. So I was laughing at him and said, we have to suit you up too. So yeah. he's got completely closed in now. Oh, yeah, oh, do I need the mic out too. And uh, we are ready. Okay, so we're getting the smoker sure going. Sometimes okay, good, you need good, to do yeah. the smoker again. Okay, Yeah, yeah. good yeah. enough. Do you want me to do that? Or? Sure, yeah, All yeah, right. smoke. In fact, you can, yeah. So what we're doing, we're smoking the bees. Um, let's see now, you said that that basically makes them want to have some more honey. It, it calms them down, they eat honey, and then they're in a very good mood and don't care to sting anyone. Uh, Whoa. So, yeah. Now, okay. and do that one a little bit and this one a little bit next to okay. it. Okay, getting here. this one. Go yeah. And this one's got an awful lot. Now, see, there's a lot of bees coming in. Yeah. And, and this has got a lot of bees right here. Oh, good. Hello, good. bees. Ooh, yeah, that's they're good. sounding that's a little good. interesting now. Yeah, that's fine. That's okay, fine. good. And you see I'm bringing pollen in, too. Yeah. Lots of pollen. All right, we want to open this hive in. Okay. And we're going to show a frame of brood. All right. Now, do you want me to keep on smoking, or is that necessary? Uh, no, not yet, but up here you can. All right. Now, smoke right there on top. There you go. Now, okay. you see there are bees right on top. That's really cool. Okay, now hold on. I'll just smoke right in this crack right there. Yeah, there we go. All right. There we go. Okay, good. Now... We're going to take this over really here. All right, now, let's see, let's go right down here. Oh, wow. Now, here's something. Now, this is honey. Excellent. We want that, we still want them heavy. Right. For, um, uh, so they don't starve. So this is good. I've got about 10 frames of honey on the top in there. Uh-huh. And, and so they're actually eating this. Rather than yeah. making honey, they're actually eating Yeah, they this will honey. consume it. And if you look closely, you notice since we smoked, see them? They're eating honey right yeah. there, see? Now there's a, a there's a, a, a Is that male, the drone? Okay. A drone, yeah. Okay, let's see if we can get a close up of that guy. Uh, yeah, wait, wait, don't, don't smoke. Okay, don't now, smoke him? Right? Okay, wait. sorry. All right. Okay. Yeah, drones are male bees. They do not have a stinger. Mm -hmm. They're here to mate with virgin queens. That's their purpose. And there, there he is right there. He's large and clumsy. The queen's the largest, but the males are next. And then all these are female worker bees. Worker bees. In here. And okay. there's some more there. All right. Now, hold, that, hold that there for a second. There's another drone. Yeah, another drone, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Now you were telling me that the drones actually get kicked out in the late fall because they all they do is eat, 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 right. and they even have to be fed. They're they're not good workers at all. Mm -hmm. They have to be fed, so the the uh, the hive bees kick them out in October. Mm -hmm. In the winter, you won't have hardly any at all in there. Right. Then they'll build up in the spring again, so that they're, they're there for uh, mating with a queen bee. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Now, let's go down. Do I need any more smoke? All right, we're going to have to go down. Yeah, you can smoke the top there. See when the bees come up, then we smoke them. Just let them know we're in here. Hello, we're here. There we go. <laughs> now let me check one more frame. Sure. For brood. Our brood is down below. I think we're going to have to go down. Yeah, we are going to have to go down. Okay. Now we're going to go down one more. Let me show you here. All right. Let me take this. Okay, now, all right, when I crank this open, we mm -hmm. want to smoke. Okay. Let's use the hive tool here. It's heavy. Yeah. Okay. And then... To let them know we're here right, and right, calm right. down. There we go. Okay. Thank you. We're good. You're now welcome. I'm going to take this off. Good job with that smoker, Jimmy. Good job. <laughs>
Now that weighs probably about 40 pounds right there. Wow, so you have to have a good upper body oh. strength to be able to do this. Yeah, now smoke those down, Jenny, please, yeah. Yes, indeed. Now what I'm gonna show you here, is that enough? this is excellent here. Now we have here a, this is the pupa of a drone. Okay. It's large and this is excellent. We check them all the time for mites. Mm -hmm. Now see it's pearly white. Okay. And it has no mites on it, no mites at all. That's a very good sign. If I saw four or five mites on there, little brown creatures, mm -hmm. I would need to treat this hive uh, yeah. because they're going to uh, kill the bees with the viruses they uh, implement into them. So, uh, but that's a good sign. It's very, very white there. It's so interesting that the the insect that attacks the it's like an insect attacking an insect. So there's a mite that attacks the bee, but it's actually what's in the mite. It's the virus in the mite yes, that really right. hurts it. Yeah, right. the mite doesn't kill in a direct way. Right. It's, it's kind of like us. We break our skin, mm -hmm. we can get an infection. Right. Well, they break the exoskeleton, the skin of the bee, and then they get these viruses. Right. You know, so, you know, okay, good. Okay, now, see how, now, see how all the bees are up here now? Yes. And they're coming up to feed and all. So we're going to smoke and send them back down a little bit so we can work them more easily. Okay, guys, have a little smoke. Yeah. This is the if only you're a beekeeper, time... you're going to get stung a few times a day. That's just part of it, but... Um, there we go. Here's your arthritis, you know. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you were talking about both arthritis and multiple sclerosis. There's a lot no. of people who actually use bees as a therapy, getting stung by bees as a therapy. Right, right. Now there's more drone brood there. Okay. And this is open. Mm -hmm. And when I'm out inspecting, I always cut that open to check like I did the other one sure. for mites. Okay. And, uh, and these are all the ladies working hard. That's a telltale sign, yeah. Okay, put that there. Now, okay, a little more on top there, we'll smoke them. And now we're gonna go down and show you some brood, which is very important. Okay, let's see what we got here now. Is that enough? The more brood we have in a hive, the more they have to go out and pollinate. Mm-hmm. And that's what we want. We want them on the blooms out there in the field. Right, they have to be the worker ladies. Yeah. Can you hear all the bees around us? Isn't this neat? Wow, look at all those bees. Now, one thing I thought was interesting is bees really like yeah. to be, when they're working, they like to, when they're in their hive, they like their hive to be dark. Yeah, they do. Yeah, it's always dark. Do you want me now, to smoke this? Here, no, no. Do we, okay. All right. Yeah, don't smoke when I pull it out. That's fine. Okay, good. They're calm now. But this is honey. Now, we uncapped it there. They're, see how they're feeding, eating yes, that up? Yes, yeah. See, this is honey. You've got brood here. You can't see the eggs in, in the cell, but... Yeah, there's uncapped honey. They're all eat. They've got a circle all around that yeah, now. Yeah, see how shiny it is? And I'm sure it's yeah. very sticky. Yeah, it looks like water, but that's honey. You know, this is capped honey here. Mm -hmm. And there's brood in there. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're out in the field. They've got to get pollen to make bee bread to feed the larvae. And the larvae are fed for nine days, from egg to nine days old, and then it's capped off. Okay. And then 12 days later, the bees emerge. Wow. Full grown, just like you see. Yes. Now kids ask, well, show me a baby bee. Well, there are no baby bees. <laughs> right, because you have the larva. Well, insects don't have babies Oops. like that. Well, they have, they have larvas. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the larvae are the, if you want to mm -hmm. call them babies, that's a larva. Oh, that yeah. didn't like me. That's okay. All right, now I got stung here, so if you... Yes. And that's going to mask the smell, the alarm pheromone, and chance I won't get stung on there again. Well, that would be good. Yeah, yeah. Everybody reacts then, differently to bee stings. So, yeah, we got 10 frames of brood in there okay. like this. And that's why, the, that's what we want to pollinate that field so well. Good. Okay, now if you smoke them a little more, Jenny, I'm going to put this back in. All right. This says to them, well, calm down. We're going to add some more good stuff to you yeah. guys. Yeah. This extremely healthy hive here. This is good. how we like to see all of them. It has very, uh, no disease in it right now. We look for, oh, another thing over here, if you can see, now here's pollen. See how they store the pollen? That gold and brown? Yeah. That's all pollen. And they take that pollen and notice this, the cells aren't full, but they're about half to three-fourths full. And bees don't have a pantry or refrigerator or anything, so they put that pollen there to keep it fresh. They pack nectar on top, and okay. that keeps it from drying out. Mm -hmm. And then they'll use that as they need it. So they, they do their own storage and their own yeah, preserves. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay, in it goes. Do you need, is it still all right? Okay. 
good. One thing I thought was interesting is um, I've always heard of bees being a European thing, but bees actually came from Asia. Yes. Interesting. Asia, Asia and Africa, Europe, and then, of course, in the United America, we didn't get bees till 1621. And, and the European the colonists co brought the them over. The European bees, mm -hmm. the colonists brought them over, yes. Right. The colonists, yeah. And we didn't have the problem with the different mites until they came from Asia also. Right, and we got them in... On the eastern shore in 1994. Just 94. Yeah, in wow. the states, and that's when bees became very important for. To, uh, they were disappearing at that point. Yes. And we had to. If you didn't have managed bees today, there'd hardly be any honeybees at all. Mm -hmm. We managed them and treat them and care for them like never before. Right. But my dad and grandfather on the farm were bees. They hardly did anything to them. They didn't have to then. You didn't yeah. have these diseases. Right. Well, we're going to close this back up. Give them a little more smoke one more time right. so I don't crush them when I Here put guys, this back on. Put your top on now. Calm yep. down. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. That works. I didn't see any squished bees. There you go. Yep. And this is our inner cover. Yeah. And reason we have, see that hole in the inner cover? Yeah. That's to give them ventilation. Oh, okay, because they work hard and it, they, they develop a, a good, strong and heat. It's don't very they? hot in there. Mm -hmm. And they keep that queen 94 degrees at all times. Wow. And another thing, I can come out here today when it's, say, 90 degrees or so this mm -hmm. weekend, you can put a tissue here and they're fanning, circulating that air and that tissue will flow out like there's air conditioning in there. Because they actually do their wing beats, Yeah, they, right? they mm -hmm. beat the wings and cause that, yeah. Now, if you look here, here's pollen coming in and lots of pollen. See on the legs, that yellow yes. pollen? Very good sign. They're on the plants. They're foraging those plants. That is bright, lots bright of yellow. Yes. Lots of pollen. Beautiful yellow pollen, wow. yes. The, so, the ladies are working hard. So they're working hard and they're, <laughs> they're worth it. Yeah, they're yes. doing their job. Yeah. These yeah. are foraging bees now, of course, going out for pollen and nectar. And bees live... In the summer, spring and summer, six weeks. Their lifespan is six weeks, that's all. Well, that's because they work so hard. They work so hard, right. In mm -hmm. the last two weeks of their life, they start out, they, they emerge, they clean cells, they feed the larvae, mm -hmm. then they guard the entrance. In the last two weeks, they forage. The last two weeks, they're foraging, and then that's the end of their life. They so die. They almost have to kind of work up to it. Like, are you qualified right, right. to go Each for stage. this. Each well, that's stage. good because that way, by feeding mm -hmm. the, the larvae, they get to learn what the taste and the smell is. They do, And yes. it does make sense. It's sort of a different, uh, like, for instance, you, nobody starts off at the president of the company. Right. <laughs> you work your way up. <laughs> right. And the bees are doing the same thing. That's fascinating. Exactly. They do. They all have those plates, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And the good thing about it, one thing about it, going through those stages, mm -hmm. but they always need this food coming in, the pollen and all, but let's say we have a pesticide kill. Sometimes we have that with aerial spraying. Right. And it kills a large percentage of the uh, field bees. Sure. Well, you say, well, you have to wait for all those stages to get... No, they speed that up. They oh, speed that up. They also can. go right past that feeding the, and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, nurse bees and, and garby, and they're out in the field. Because they know that their life they, depends on getting got, out that more pollen yeah, and that nectar. It, it's like our pantry's empty. We can't just sit around and starve. No. We've got to go to the store Absolutely. and buy some food. And so they know that. They do. That's really, that's yeah. neat. And they're, it's so funny that they're so tiny, but they work so hard. Yes. Um, I think it's interesting to know um, with the work that I've been doing with, uh, with bees and all that, or learning about it, that the bumblebees don't just work from 8 to 10. And I do know also that the honeybees yeah. don't particularly like to work if it's cloudy or rainy or drizzly. But right. bumblebees, ah, nothing faces them. They continue to work. But you don't get pollen from bumblebees because they don't make a hive like this. They're, they're like yeah. single bees. Yeah, they have little cups. And, and now there are boxes you can rent bumblebees too. But yes. they build in the ground, usually under roots of trees and all. Right. And they collect nectar just enough for the brood, not surplus nectar. Sure. They still do a great job of pollinating, but you don't get the honey from them. Right, right. right. And another thing, a bee, these worker bees in her lifetime will collect one-twelfth a teaspoon of nectar to make honey. One-twelfth. You say, well, that's all, but you got 50,000 bees in yeah. the hive there. And with that many... And my honey yards, they will make surplus honey. They'll bring enough nectar in for right. surplus honey. You were talking also um, the amount of um, you know money that is made by 
the fruits and vegetables because of, the, of all these bees. Oh yeah, yeah. In uh, nationwide, in in the United States, uh, bees are responsible for pollen. Uh, 14 billion dollars worth of agriculture crops. Wow. 14 billion. That's hard to imagine that amount. Wow. Yes. Well, I am so glad we have done this. This is really interesting and we've actually been in the beehive in a very mm. real sense. Dean, mm. thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and, and letting everyone know on Delmarva just how important it is to have bees so we can have things like yummy watermelon and cantaloupe and squash and even tomatoes. Without bees, we don't have tomatoes. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Well, good. It's fun for me just to talk about bees and I enjoy it very much. That's Thanks for good. being here too. Sure, sure. And Delmarva, thank you so much for joining us right here on Delmarva Gardens on Pack 14. Mm -hmm.